Great, so uh, nice to meet you all. I'm Andrew Levy I'm on the product side at, within uh, end user computing at VMware. Uh, this will be a little different than your previous presentations. We're going to take you out of the data center into end user services, end user devices, talk about how we manage and secure the digital workspace. So, uh, you know, you probably all heard that traditional perimeter is dead. Uh, there's obviously new ways that employees want to work anywhere and everywhere outside the four walls of the office. Obviously, it's a very complex uh, environment to manage. It also opens up your surface area for attack. You've heard that theme in these presentations about reducing the attack surface. Uh, and we'll talk about how we can enforce a, a least privilege or zero trust type environment uh, with Workspace ONE. Uh, now, you know, there's, uh, there can be a, a bit of a pull between IT and InfoSec in terms of delivering, you know, the need for securing the environment and delivering a great user experience. Uh, obviously, as uh, threats increase, uh, you know, it doesn't make those decisions easier. But what we've really tried to do with Workspace ONE is make security intrinsic. It's built into the platform. Uh, we've also tried to make the interactions between InfoSec and IT more data-driven. And I'll give you some great examples of that as we go through here. Uh, but, you know, it's really about how we can better enforce device hygiene, access control, uh, reduce alert fatigue, and again, especially as it corresponds to how things can tend to be thrown over the wall between IT and InfoSec. All right. So uh, as um, many in the industry do, we think about security in layers. Uh, the first one here is around your users. Uh, I mentioned access control, so we have full ident uh, identity and access management uh, through VMware Identity Manager. Uh, so you can manage your users, your groups, uh, uh, your certificate lifecycle, uh, distribution of those certificates, renewal, revocation. Uh, we also have uh, some great conditional access controls that I'll get, get into in the next slide here. Uh, and a variety of different authentication types that we support. Uh, VMware Identity Manager can be, can be an IDP, but uh, we're often federated with other identity providers uh, that, are, that are in the organization. On top of that, we support uh, applications, again, deployed anywhere and everywhere across a, a variety of devices. Uh, these applications, you can, of course, manage uh, the lifecycle of those applications. You can deploy updates, uh, push out those, those apps. Uh, we, through uh, Horizon, also support remote applications or, or applications delivered through RDSH, as well as uh, full virtual desktops. Uh, we also have uh, DLP controls that we enforce uh, either at the, uh, that the operating system supports as well as through uh, our own secure applications. In addition to that, we also have uh, some custom components you can integrate if you're building your own applications, and we'll get into more details as we, we go through that. Um, and then the next layer here is on the endpoints. You know, I mentioned uh, employees want to work on a variety of device types. You look around this room, you can see the, you know, the fragmentation's real. And uh, we, you know, what's, what's great and what's a lot different from the past is historically you've had uh, a tool used in each of these different platform groups, right? You've had, uh, you know, your, your iOS or your, your, and your Android, your mobile teams. You've had your Mac team, your, Win, your Windows team. Uh, you know, maybe a separate team for ruggedized devices, whatever it is, we've broken down those barriers. We've united uh, these various platforms under Workspace ONE uh, so that you can really focus around managing that user and their experience versus uh, the nuances of each individual platform in those devices. Uh, and so what we support is, of course, uh, pretty much everything I just mentioned, uh, iOS, Android, uh, ruggedized devices, uh, Win 10, Mac, Chromebooks. Uh, basically, uh, most of uh, the environments that your employees will use. And finally, on the network, uh, we uh, can do a lot of uh, enforcement in terms of uh, uh, encryption, of course. Uh, we also support things like per app VPN and split tunneling, and we'll, we'll get into more detail on that. Uh, and then we also integrate with other components uh, like NSX for, for micro segmentation. So I mentioned conditional access in the, in the last slide. Uh, now with conditional access, what we've done is brought together our identity uh, controls along with our device management, our device posture information. So what that means is based on a variety of factors, you can uh, block or allow or uh, require step up 
multi-factor authentication depending on what conditions are present in the environment. So what this means is, uh, you know, based on say location or what uh, IP address range they're coming in on, based on the the configuration of the device, if it's out of in or out of compliance, you can set a variety of policies uh, to enforce that access. We've actually also uh, uh, extended this with uh, Workspace ONE Intelligence. We'll get into more, more detail on what, what that is, uh, but that's basically our analytics to tie all this data together that we're collecting across the digital workspace. All right. Now, with Workspace ONE, uh, we, uh, there's a variety of uh, controls that are in place. I'm going to start at the, the top here and work my way around here. Uh, so we do have a, a full set of our own secure productivity applications that we deliver as a part of that digital workspace. Uh, so we have, of course, Workspace ONE Intelligent Hub, which is a unified app catalog that allows for single sign-on uh, across all of your applications. That's delivered to the employee, uh, and it's a... Uh, uh, it's a consistent experience across whatever device you're accessing that unified app catalog on. Uh, of course, we do take advantage of when you're on a certain platform for showing, say, the, the native applications that are native to that platform. Uh, but it's a great experience for the employee. Uh, you know, in that, um, in that app catalog uh, and that single sign-on capability support uh, uh, you know, all the major MFA providers in terms of uh, conditional access. We also bundle our own VMware Verify application for if you don't have a third-party provider for, say, uh, one-time password support or modern push face authentication. So we really try to make it easy to, to get up and running. Uh, and the, the platform is very modular. So if you don't, again, if you don't have a component, we, we, we do, and we've also decomposed the platform. So basically, uh, the tools and technologies we've embedded in our own secure productivity apps we allow you to embed in your own applications things like our privacy module, our uh, AirWatch SDK for uh, uh, containerizing your applications and for, for securing them. Uh, even our app analytics, uh, we have an SDK called the Intelligence SDK uh, that you can embed in your own applications. In addition to uh, Intelligent Hub, which is our app catalog, I mentioned we have Boxer, which is our secure email application supporting things like uh, uh, SMIME, uh, uh, email classification, uh, we're also, uh, probably will be the only uh, email client to support NIAP, uh, to have a NIAP certification. So extremely secure, but again, we've also focused a lot on user experience. It's an over, has over four stars in the App Store, uh, and our, uh, you know, our customers love it. In addition to Intelligent Hub Boxer, we have a, there is a few others, Content Locker for, for uh, managing and securing content. Uh, especially relevant, you can think about uh, scenarios like delivering a flight plan to uh, a pilot. Um, you know, there's uh, there's definitely a lot of great use cases in terms in terms of delivering and managing secure content through the platform. And I'll get into uh, it says DLP policies. There I actually have a separate slide on DLP that we can cover in terms of the controls there. Then working my way down, uh, platform containers. Uh, so we have full support for things like Android Enterprise. Uh, we can enforce BitLocker encryption on Windows 10. We, uh, you know, I mentioned uh, uh, in terms of our ability to containerize apps already. And then on the Office 365 side, we, uh, of course, you can authenticate to your Office 365 applications, uh, enforce conditional access there. And uh, uh, we also have, we also support and let you manage uh, the DLP controls that you've set in Office 365, uh, we can enforce those on our side as well and share content between them through the Workspace ONE Send application. It's called, it acts as a bridge between, between those two worlds. Yeah. If you enable uh, BitLocker encryption on Windows 10, where are the keys stored? Um, so we do support a, a variety of providers. I don't have them off the top of my head. I don't know if if anyone else in the room here can, can help me out on that one, we'll have to get back to you on, on the specific uh, uh, locations that we, we store them. I, I, and you just reminded me also on the, uh, on the certificate side, we do integrate with a variety of certificate authorities. Um, I mean, most of the major ones are, are supporting the platform. Okay, uh, so that is... Uh, um, that's our app suite, containers, and, and Office 365. In terms of data loss prevention, uh, we do have 
So obviously we support uh, all the built-in OS controls and let the administrators configure those in a variety of ways. Uh, we also have extended those controls with uh, our own uh, Workspace ONE S uh, SDK to do things like require app level uh, pin codes as, as an example. Uh, but you know your typical controls like uh, enforcing copy paste, preventing screenshots, controlling how data can or cannot be exported is, is supported here. One other thing uh, to mention along with uh, uh, in terms of this previous slide and here is that uh, the, the enforcement of these policies can be done in a, uh, in a variety of scenarios. So uh, we also support something called a adaptive management, which means uh, uh, we can deliver that full app catalog even if the device isn't fully under management, if it's not, say, MDM enrolled. And uh, this is a great model because it allows uh, Basically, it allows you to move to more of a, a carrot versus a stick type model. So how can you incentivize employees to enroll those devices? Well, there's certain resources you may be fine with delivering on an unmanaged device, uh, or maybe you've, you know, you've built some applications that already have secure containers around them. Uh, whatever it is, you know, so let's say your favorite video conferencing application may not require uh, full enrollment, but that secure financial, that secure application that has secure, uh, a private financial data may require the device to be enrolled. It's at that point that they try to access that that we can prompt them to go through that enrollment process as an incentive for expanding what they can access on that specific device. Okay. All right. Uh, now, uh, you know, we talk a lot about day zero through through day two and onwards. Uh, in terms of day zero, we really try to make it easy to get up and running uh, and take the guesswork out of setting up these policies. Uh, you know, it can be daunting for an IT administrator. Uh, there's something like over 4,000 GPOs alone on Windows. And so the question is, how do I set up and secure my environment? And one of our ways that we've addressed this is through industry standard baselines like the CIS benchmarks. So you can take those benchmarks and the variety of uh, levels that are supported there. Um, so you can pick you know, a higher level if you need a more secure environment, apply those baselines, but then you have the option to customize them as you apply those baselines when you're setting up your environment. So you can uh, you know, turn on Windows Hello if it's disabled, as an example, as you go, as you go through this process. Now, uh, I've talked about a variety of components. Uh, I've talked about uh, our core UEM or Unified Endpoint Management component, which is uh, for device management, uh, which helps you continuously apply device policies, you know, reduce configuration drift, uh, really drive towards a, a desired state. I talked about VMware Identity Manager in terms of access control. I mentioned Horizon for VDI remote applications. Uh, there, there's a lot of data sitting in those systems. What we've done is we've brought them together into a large-scale data lake so that we can derive insights and attach those insights to automation. So there's a full automation engine built in intelligence uh, to be able to look for changes in the environment and then automate and orchestrate your actions as a result of those changes. And I, I'll get into some examples and, and do a demo here. Uh, is that a cloud-based service or something I can put on site? Uh, this is cloud only. Uh, it can connect to your on-prem. So Workspace ONE can be deployed on-prem. This particular component is cloud only, and it can connect to those environments. Any chance it could be on-prem? Uh, not right now. Yeah, we don't have plans for it. We are, um, it, it is, uh, uh, I'd say, uh, a suite of data isolation in certain regions. You know, we're deployed all over the world. Um, you know, I'd say that uh, on the federal side, we're looking at certifications to, to get us there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no on-prem plans today. What data is stored in this data lake? Is uh, it we're, on, we're on AWS. No, no, what data is stored in the data lake? Are okay. we talking uh, about yeah, actual about identities? Actually. Yes, so I, uh, I'll start at the top left here and work, work my way through what, what data is going here. Uh, so our endpoint data flows in, so this is device posture, all that configuration data, you know, what operating system versions are out there, all the various, you know, the hundreds of different uh, posture fields that, that we look for, you know, like, uh, you know, firewall enabled or not, uh, uh, you know, what, what applications are installed, so the entire app inventory, 
and you know the various configuration settings. On the identity side, uh, data about those app catalog launches and interactions, which allows you to actually track uh, your cloud engagement based on launches into those applications. We, uh, uh, as well as anything, uh, really any any app that's launched from, from the application. We also get data about different authentication types being used, data about failed logins, which is a particularly interesting data source that flows into the platform. App analytics, so this is deeper than install data, which we get through our endpoint management uh, uh, data. App analytics is data about uh, what crashes might have occurred, uh, network and uh, cloud service interactions within the applications, critical flows or transactions that are used in an app. So if that barcode scanning app is failing in the warehouse or the bank manager can't fill it alone, uh, all that data flows in there. And then uh, we also have CVE data flowing in, uh, which we'll talk about and, and do a demo about in a bit here. So that data comes in and then we're, we process it. Uh, we have a bunch of great visualization reporting tools and the, that automation engine that can act. Uh, the two main use cases are on user experience and security. And actually we have a, another session just on this topic that we'll get into more detail on Workspace ONE Intelligence. All right, so this, this is a demo here of uh, managing patches and updates. Now, uh, as you've, it's obviously a headache as we've talked about in the, in the previous sessions here. We, uh, we really try to make it easy for our administrators. So what we're looking at is, oops. Sorry about that. What we're looking at here is our, actually our automation engine. And what this allows you to do, again, is set a few conditions. So in this case, we're looking for a specific patch uh, that's available but uh, hasn't been installed. And we've set up those filters right up here. And what you can then do is execute a variety of actions to occur. And those actions can be within our platform or they can be out to third-party service providers. Uh, so in this case, we're going to send an email, we're going to send a Slack message about the update going out. Uh, we can go ahead and approve the patch. Uh, the other thing to call out here is we are pulling in lookup values, so all the contextual data that uh, is present that matches those filters, so all the device information, all that flows in here. And so you can do things like create a ServiceNow incident uh, along with that uh, and pass in that contextual data. So we've configured this to run, and now you can deploy that update. And if we switch back to our UEM console, we can see the status of all the updates. I'm going to search for that specific patch. Excuse me. Could you shrink this down so we can see the fonts? Because to be honest, I can't read anything. Um, don't. Let's see. I don't know if I can. <coughs> yeah, it's embedded video, so I can't. No, uh, I mean you're overdrive. It sounds like look feels like you're overdriving the um, projector. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, I I'll be around afterwards if and we can I can run through it. Um, yeah. So uh, basically, it's just showing the the install status here and that we've uh, we've pushed out that update. I mentioned we're also uh, ingesting CVE data. Now, uh, and we'll get into a, a demo of this in, in the next session. Um, you know, essentially this is, uh, this is one of those things that is, when, when I talked about IT and InfoSec and making their interactions more data driven, uh, this is a key area here where, you know, typically there's an SLA attached between these groups. Uh, you know, InfoSec says, you know, based on the severity, uh, you need to patch this, these vulnerabilities in, you know, you have two weeks or you have a few days, whatever it is, you have 30 days, 60 days. Um, this, it, it's a very inefficient process. We're really trying to uh, move our customers to be uh, proactive, as you heard also in the last session. So this is all about proactive, intelligent decision making. And uh, uh, a great example of where this fell down is, uh, you know, I'm sure you're all familiar with what happened with uh, the Equifax breach by now. Uh, in that scenario, DHS notified them about the vulnerability. Uh, the attackers didn't exploit it until something like 65 days later. The interesting thing, though, is that during that time window, their vulnerability management team emailed over 400 people in the organization uh, to close out the vulnerability. 
right? You know, obviously it didn't, didn't end up happening, very inefficient process, so that's why it's important that we have this data flowing in, uh, and then what we can do under the covers is map, map those vulnerabilities uh, to the required KBs that actually close them out. We also look at the severity levels, and then because we have all that posture and configuration data, we know which endpoints are vulnerable, and you can easily prioritize which ones to go ahead and patch. All right. OK, uh, another feature to highlight in the platform is uh, Workspace ONE sensors. So there's a, as you can tell, there's a ton of data that we collect out of the box. We certainly don't collect everything that you might need in an environment. Uh, so if there's custom data, like a custom registry key that you want to read, for example, if there's a, a custom script you want to write, we actually have a separate product also called product provisioning uh, that you can use within, UEM, within our UEM product. Uh, but within sensors, you can deploy a sensor, a PowerShell script, you can read additional data, uh, that can be passed, that get, then gets passed into Workspace ONE Intelligence into that large scale data lake where you can visualize it, but you can also run additional automations based on the results of those sensors. And I have a demo uh, so we can take a look at this. So in this case, we're looking at a dashboard of uh, various sensors that have run, you know, collecting uh, things like uh, some, you know, bio, some BIOS values, uh, BitLocker status, uh, st different storage available. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, skip ahead here. So what we can do is we can take uh, sensor data now. In this case, we're going to uh, take, we're going to deploy a sensor that looks for uh, say low, uh, low storage on the boot volume, take that data as a trigger so that we can then go ahead and, and notify those users, hey, you're going uh, to have some issues unless you clear up some space um, so that we can, we can notify them. Now, obviously, we can do more than just notify. We can deploy profiles to, to remediate profiles onto the machines. And so in this case, we're going to look for uh, machines that have secure boot disabled and we can go ahead and install a profile to automatically remediate it based on those conditions existing here. So in this case we're looking for enrolled devices. We notice that secure boot flag is false and we can go ahead and send a notification and, and push out that profile update. So that that is Workspace ONE sensors. Now um, and again, we'll get into more detail on this in the next session, but we also have, uh, we've extended uh, the, the ecosystem of partners with uh, this program called Workspace ONE Trust Network. Uh, if you think back to the data that I mentioned that we collect, it's very rich app device identity data. We do collect some of our own uh, uh, more security oriented data. You know, I mentioned CVE data flowing in. We also do things like compromised device detection. Uh, but we've extended that with data from some of the leading uh, security vendors in the ecosystem. And what we're doing is we're ingesting threat information f directly from these vendors. Uh, this is, these aren't commercial threat feeds. These are products that our customers have jointly uh, pushed out there in their environments alongside Workspace ONE. Uh, so whenever, you know, so we can get data about things like if there's malware present, uh, if there's DLP violations, say through a CASB, uh, if there's men in the middle attacks going on. So that data flows in, we can match it up against our existing data and then drive automated remediation. Uh, so the goal is really automate the IT response. You know, it's, the InfoSec teams have their existing SOAR tools, their existing playbooks. Uh, on the IT side, we can automate their response as well. And again, improve the interactions between them, reduce alert fatigue overall. Uh, we started with um, mobile threat defense, endpoint detection response, slash EPP, and uh, the cloud access security brokers as some of the initial vendors that we've integrated with. Uh, you also see some next-gen firewall secure up gateway. Uh, we've made those announcements. Uh, those integrations, though, will be more, uh, which we've publicly talked about, second half of the year. In the, your data lake, and so it looks like you're gathering um, user information as well as 
device information mm -hmm. and so forth and correlating the two. I got to ask, in Europe, how are you going to have the right to be forgotten from this lake? How do you handle that? GDPR. Yeah, we, we definitely, uh, and I'd say the, to use our own legal team's terminology, abide by the principles of GDPR. Uh, we, and we do, have the cap we do have the capability to delete data from our system to identify user data and delete it. We do, um, obviously, we're at the whim and respect the privacy controls of the data that's upstream from us. In other words, uh, there's privacy controls in, uh, in UEM, in, in, uh, in Workspace ONE already, uh, and that data then syncs to us. We do have additional controls that are in place, and we do plan to, to build out more. Uh, for example, on the app analytics side, you can completely <coughs> turn off network monitoring of specific endpoints if, if you wanted to. Uh, so it's definitely a, a question we get asked. Uh, you know, given our presence in Frankfurt, as an example, you know that uh, alleviates some concerns around you know data leaving the EU. Uh, but it is it's definitely a hot topic that we continue to work through. And if you were to ask me, do we have uh, do we have all the privacy controls today that we'd like? There's probably more that we could add as we go along, but so far we've been able to work with customers and they've, been, they've actually been okay with what we're doing today. So as I travel around the world with my device, do I always go back to something in the EU or do I hit the one in the US, do I hit the one in China, or do I have to hit the one in Frankfurt every time? Because that sounds like a performance nightmare. Uh, so it is... Uh, so we actually the, the way it works is we sync with your where your UEM or your Workspace One your main instance your main tenant is located. So we don't there is data there is some additional data we collect directly off the device uh, in the case of say app analytics, but the majority of the data is actually synced in the back end. So we're, it's no additional data load on top of the existing Workspace One data that's. So going. my. User data could be in multiple data centers at the same time. Uh, no, it would be wherever your tenant's tied to. So if, if you deployed Workspace ONE in Frankfurt in this example, uh, that's where your data would be. But that's, um, and you know, we've, Workspace ONE as a platform has made optimizations to, to support that. Um, but in terms of this large scale data lake, that syncing, again, happens on, more on, the, on the server side. All right, thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I have uh, I have two minutes left in this session, and this is actually the last slide. So this is everything I've been talking about here. This is our, our big architecture slide. Um, you know, we've talked about single sign-on, that unified app catalog, the secure productivity apps, uh, the major components you see there in the middle: VMware Identity Manager, Unified Endpoint Management, our uh, powered by AirWatch, our Horizon product and intelligence and trust network. One, uh, you know, we mentioned uh, uh, on the network side, tying into NSX, we have talked uh, publicly about our, our vision of end-to-end uh, -end security from end user device all the way through to the, to the data center. You can see that uh, in these components, you know, just like we're doing with app defense, enforcing the known good, NSX in terms of micro-segmentation, and us in terms of our compliance policies and uh, our access control, it's really all about reducing that attack surface, uh, especially with things like Perhaps VPN, where that application's data is directed to a single source in your data center, where we can block east-west uh, unnecessary east-west traffic. Um, we're also working on interesting ways that you can automate your response and calls into the data center based on threats we see on the end user devices and endpoints. We showed a neat demo of this at uh, at VMworld this past VMworld, where uh, there were some domain controller administrators on their Windows PCs. They were compromised, and what we did was we actually called into App Defense and raised the threat level on those domain controllers uh, as a proactive response to noticing that threat, as well as put, putting those devices into quarantine groups within NSX. So. Obviously, it's not required to have the full VMware stack, but once you start deploying these components, we can work together and really secure the environment.